go gangster. It's a beautiful day. Press the button, Rich. Are we live? Press the button, Rich. I think we might be live. Are we live? Are we live and kicking? <laughs> we might be live. Okay, so. Lovely people. Hello, it's Mr. Oliver here. Uh, happy Tuesday. It is a Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah, no, nah, yes, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday today. Uh, Mr. Gennaro Cucado is here. Hi everyone! So um, I am, we're, gonna, we're going live on Facebook and Instagram. And YouTube. And, and YouTube. So three. Uh, we are, um, as you might have known, we've got Friday Night Feasts uh, starting again at the beginning of December. And we've done a best of the last five years cookbook. One of the recipes that I did uh, here uh, is bacalao a brass. Oh. So um, we have got a friend in the uh, Santos, come round here. Uh, we got a friend in the kitchen today who is a very famous Portuguese chef. Basically, he's like a Portuguese version of Gennaro. It's <laughs> amazing. So, um, so we're going to have three languages, possibly four, being spoken. So hold your horses. We're going to show you this dish, bacalao abras. It's basically salt cod, which they rehydrate and they stew, and then they have uh, potatoes. And is that the whole dish? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And eggs, and it's a classic dish. So we're going to go and have that. Santi, come round here, big come boy. Uh, Santos, I've worked with for 20 years since the River Cafe. Uh, he is Brazilian, but speaks Portuguese. So Santos, yes. we're going to go and introduce Carlos now. Um, how did you meet Carlos? I met him in Portugal, met him in Portugal three years ago, and then he's on the on the street, and then we become friends. So you met him on the street. Met him on the street in because the... he had a little shop selling bolinho de bacalhau. And then I so came tell in. the people what Bonino de Bacalao is, like a little cod fritter. A little right? cod fritter, yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. And, so, then, and then I met him and then and the man I told him I worked with you. And then he got excited and he showed me around all the and, uh, all this stuff. Me and Sanchez worked together a long, long time. Gennaro's been my mentor, my first boss in London. Uh, uh, Santos, uh, kombucha, fishmonger, cook. Uh, he took uh, care of all the back of house back in the day. Well, for many, many years. But basically, we're setting up a boy band. Just to, we're, we're, we're making it official today. We're going to release a Christmas song. And we're going to do an Italian, I'm just joking. Uh, English, Italy, Portuguese, Port, uh, Brazilian. Should we go and meet Carlo? Yeah. Let's yeah. So, so we're going to try and translate. Come, come, come. I'll, I'll try and make some spaghetti. Uh, Gennaro is also <laughs> made some spaghetti. <laughs> So, um, wish me luck. <laughs> Carlos! Say hello to the world. This is Carlos, everybody. Uh, you can talk in Portuguese. Talk to our Portuguese people. Foi muito bem recebido e considero este todo este pessoal uma família. Muito obrigado, thank you very much. É, por me ouvirem. Obrigado. E são ambos, são uma simpatia. É um prazer para mim muito grande estar na presença de dois monstros da cozinha internacional. Dos monstros da cozinha? Dois monstros. Oh, Deus meu! Não cozinha, não anything could have been said there but what's really nice is, is Carlos came the other day with some amazing produce from Portugal wine sweet wine sausages cheese unbelievable so we were very very grateful and one of the beautiful things about social media is that you know it wasn't that long ago we were having conversations in our own country in our own countries now we can have friendships relationships and we can share information from many countries so four, four countries represented here so um, if you can pre uh, you can translate um, Santos, yeah. Gennaro will probably make it up. Uh, that's what he does. He always makes it up. But it's, uh, you know, how's your Portuguese? Ah, it's my Portuguese. Obrigado, obrigado. Oh, obrigado. Fa fa falo Portuguese. Oh. Se dos mostros de la cocina. <laughs> 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 um, let's, can Carlos talk us through uh, and show us yeah. how he made this dish and, uh, and and tell us where it came from? Uh, let's let's see it first. Let's see it first. The cap. Um, okay, so where do we go? Are we going to make this? Ah. So we're going to make this dish. I'm going to do my best to give you some information about what's going on. Um, so uh, this is the soul cod. Santa. Yeah. How, how did you... Uh, Jump. The, uh, the salt cod was this. Take it out of the pack. So uh, salt cod was one of the fundamental foods. Um, and this, for many cultures and many armies, 
powered people. So before the days of refrigeration and freezers, you would salt fish, you would air dry it, and then you had mobile food that you could rehydrate to give you high energy protein. Um, and I'm going back thousands of years. So uh, this is a massive part of the culture in Portugal and many other countries actually. You know, uh, Carlos, what did you do to the salt cod? How did you treat it? Como você trata ele antes de, de cozinhar ele? Tem que se partir e pôr de molho, este bacalhau, por menos três dias dentro de água. As partes mais grossas. Translate, big boy. Ok, uh, cortar ele em costas e colocar nada. Não, 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 and then soak in the water for three days minimum. Right. And then, then we can do whatever we can. We can grill, we can pan, we can poach, whatever. So, so just to kind of clarify, this this kind of quite a brace uh, curing in salt, um, it stopped it deteriorating, it preserved it. It meant that you could have it for months and months and months. It meant you could take it on horseback, donkey back, up a mountain, at hundreds of miles into the countryside, when you don't live anywhere near the sea. It meant that you could go on a ship for months uh, but yes, we rehydrate this for three days, and then of course that excess salt, and then we can use to season the rest of the dish. So, the process to soak them for three days, we can change the water every day. Every day. So we change the water every day. So now in the Island. And actually, the Lugrat uh, here, so this comes from Iceland, yeah. and in Iceland they've got amazing fish and uh, amazing preserving. Yeah. So this is a sausage, it's a smoked sausage, so this is fat in here, correct? Fat? Yeah. And then this is with a with the flour. Whole fat and flour, so it was like a poor man's uh, sausage, smoked, a big flavour. Yeah. And this is like a, a chorizo? Chorizo, yeah. Chorizo. yeah. And this, this one is the game. It's yeah. like the poor fat, you use the game. So this one here was for the Jewish community. Yeah. Um, and they use game uh, instead of the pork. Yeah. Just lost the feed. We're under this bit here, but we can um, just move around to the end. If you go to the end, we might pick it back up again. So are we going to cook on the other side? Anyway, here we'll be Yeah, yeah. Here we go. We're back in. We're back in. Yeah. No, it's always going. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about the Wi-Fi. Are we back in on everything? Yeah, we're back in on everything. So guys, bear with me. This is going to be fun. So do I have to stay here, or is it going to uh, go? Again? Well, we can we can go around with Gennaro, maybe. Can we go around here? The Wi-Fi's a bit testy. Okay. Okay. It's a nicer shot, anyway. So Gennaro, you make spaghetti. <laughs> Gennaro is completely confusing everything by doing spaghetti and seafood. But that's not Portuguese and that's not Carlos is it. Um, so we'll watch. Okay. Well we might as well show what Gennaro's doing. So uh, is he gonna cook some now, big boy? Nice one. So Gennaro, tell everyone why random what you're doing here. Well, because bacala we also use in Italy, especially in Napoli area. You know, when it comes Christmas, bacala, bacala, bacala. Also, we make a dish which is with a spaghetti, fresh tomato, garlic, and chili. A bit of parsley, splash of the wine, get a spaghetti, put them inside, and this is it. What's interesting is um, the, the Portuguese Navy culture was actually a very powerful one and a very uh, prolific one in yeah. its time. So, Naples. I believe was run by the Portuguese. Uh, the Portuguese took vinegar to India, and uh, and uh, they had an incredible uh, navy. But of course, with navy and with came food and trade, and that's why salt cod was. Uh, and the salt cod undoubtedly would have been with those sailors on the boats uh, as well. Go on, Gennaro. Let's play Gennaro is getting a lot of love. Yeah, Gennaro always gets a lot of love. And, um, but he's married, so get your hands off. <laughs> um, That's all right. I'm not valuable. <laughs> unless you follow bears.com. <laughs> and then you might find Gennaro's profile. Crack one, Gennaro. <laughs> God bless you. There we go. Look, it's nothing at all. It's done. Nice. Right, let's have a little helicopter shot over that. So that is, uh, Gennaro, tell us what's in the ingredients here. Well, it's a, just a little cherry tomato sweet, which is a roasted tomato in the oven, garlic, okay. chili, 
olives, a little anchovies to actually to lift the, the flavor of the sea. Bacala goes in, cook a few minutes, spaghetti goes in. Yes! You love it. Right, Gennaro, let's let Carlos come in. So you go on the other side of Carlos. So um, this is why we're setting up a boy band, everyone. So let us know if you think we should set up a English, Italian, Brazilian, Portuguese boy band and uh, we'll sing for you. Okay. We're going to do this with azeite portuguese. With the azeite yeah. Fabuloso. Tell me what you're saying, Santos, because I'm not psychic. We're going to do this with portuguese olive oil. One of the best. Okay. So just shout what you're saying, just so everyone on the internet knows what's going on. They've all got the best olive oil. In we go with portuguese olive oil. The, the dish is called bacalhau abraço. Não bacalhau abraço. Um dos bacalhaus mais sai, mais estrangeiros gostam quando visitam Portugal. Que all the tourists love it when they go to Portugal. They love the bacalhau abraço. Garlic, yeah. Garlic, Garlic goes in. I would. I'm saying that's about three or four uh, cloves onion. chopped up. He's got some sliced onion. Um, beautifully sliced. That's about one onion so far. So this is a classic dish. Very exciting. I'm going to take Gennaro's dish and just put it up here. So he's putting a couple of bay leaves in. Garlic, onions and bay leaves. What a combination. And how many dishes could you take from this beginning? Now look, this is interesting. Uh, actually no, that's got to wait. G Gennaro was premature again. <laughs> He's always a bit premature with our Gennaro. So he's frying the onions, garlic and bay off on a medium heat. Yeah, medium heat. Medium. Don't cook too long, don't, you know, just get a little bit crunchy, just get a little bit flavour. So soft, with the bay leaves. but also a little crunchy. Cod. He's got a handful of the pulled cod, and has that been cooked or, or poached, or just soaked and pulled? Just to soak them in the, in the water. So that's the and cod. Then, three days, change the water every day, yeah. and then you just pull it off the bone. Three days, yeah. It depends how thick it is, but you know. Depending on the soft. thickness, yeah. In uh, in Iceland, they get some very very thick cod, as they do in Russia as well. So now he's frying the cod with the bay, onions and garlic. Delicious. Now on Carlos's left, uh, it looks to me about six free range organic eggs. Um, so this will be very interesting. Going in more, more lubrication. The Portuguese are adding their olive oil. Um, now Carlos wants me to lick olive oil of Gennaro's hand. <laughs> I thought it was a recipe, though. <laughs> but he's pulling a face because it's not Italian. It's very good. No, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. Wow, very peppery. Very peppery. A lot of people from Portugal watching. Viva Portugal! There's Thank lots you. of people. Yeah. 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 Tell, tell Carlos there's a lot of people from Portugal Thank watching. <laughs> yeah, tell him. There's a lot of people from Portugal watching. <laughs> 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 in English, this is the worst translating. Lots of people from Portugal. In Portuguese. In Portuguese. They don't understand what we say. We're saying. Just in Portugal. <laughs> Um, so, um, so Carlos has a beautiful shop. Um, tell him, can you give me address? Well, tell him to give you address of where his shop is. We have a shop in Lisbon, and we need to do, do the shop in Lisbon. I told you it'd be funny. The shop is the other side of the bolinho de bacalhau. Tem endereço? No, it's in the Rua Augusta. It's in Rua Augusta, yes, in Lisbon. Augusta. In the centre of Lisa. There you go. So if yeah. you want a nice little bonino de bacalao, uh, go to Alvoro, Augusta. Augusta Street in Lisbon and see our main man. Okay, so back to the pan. Let's just get that in there. Let's have a little look. Let's see what's going on. So onions, bay, plenty of lubricant, olive oil, and the pulled cod. This is exciting. Now the bit is some little chips. The lovely cars. Then it is like someone from a film. I love it. <laughs> Oh, what's gone in there? What's he put in? Pepper. Okay, pepper's gone in. He's going to be busy in lunchtime, isn't he? For Christmas. So this is the beauty of cooking. You can learn about people's cultures. Right. He's got a big handful. Now, Carlos has big hands. So, a big handful of little uh, straw potatoes, straw fries. So in he goes. 
Portugal. Viva Portugal. Viva Portugal. E em inglês. Santos. Santos. Sara Dominguez. Olá from Portugal. Every mum in Portugal has a good recipe for bacalhau brass. It's one of our favourites for all the kids. Thank you, darling. Bless you. There's a lot of Portuguese comments actually coming in for you, Carlos. Nice. Can read later. And yeah, let's keep talking in Portugal. Portuguese in the football and in England. Uh, one of the longest uh, connection the countries got together with England and Portugal. Really? Long the relationship they got it for a long, long time. Is it ever met? Espero que venha representar bem o meu país, o bacalhau à brás, como se faz tradicionalmente em Portugal. E espero que quem esteja a ver que goste. Regresso no sábado e viva Portugal e à Inglaterra, neste caso, que me recebeu muito bem e a toda esta família. Obrigado. Obrigado. Você está muito feliz de estar aqui com a família. E depois você vai voltar para Portugal. Você vai ter muitos amigos e amigos que estão aqui. Muito obrigado. Não, espera, Carlos. Um momento. Um momento. Isso é muito bom. Isso é um momento muito bom, guys. So we're, we, if you think in there, we've got the sweetness and the crunch from the onions, we've got the saltiness from that beautiful cod, but now we've got crunch from potatoes and we've got eggs done. So I, I believe that this is an important part, yeah. isn't it? So what's important about this stage? Can you ask him? What's important in this hour when you put it on the plate? The The eggs go in. I reckon that's about six eggs, guys. Six eggs. I mean, it's kind of, it's like fish and chips with yeah, eggs. It's not cooking too with the eggs, just your full bone. Make sure you know, don't overcook the eggs. It's a Spanish omelet. Yeah. Don't overcook the eggs. Spanish omelet? I, I wouldn't say Spanish omelet. You want, you want to <laughs> no, 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 so we're moving it around, but we don't want to overcook the eggs. How old? How old? Santos, ask Carlos. How old is this dish? How long does the tradition of this dish go back? Olhando na história, quantos anos tem esse esse prato? Este prato diz-se que é um prato muito antigo de Lisboa. Não, este é um prato que chama a Lisboense e é um prato que depois se começou a fazer em todo o país, não é? Sim. Você tem mais ou menos uma ideia de quantos não, anos? Não, não, não. É um prato muito tradicional. E ele não usou nenhum sal, então você tem essa seasoning no cod já. Há dois mil anos? Não, não. O bacalhau foi descoberto há 500 anos e foi um português que descobriu os bancos de Portugal, os bancos de Portugal. Exciting. E até na nova. Cheguei aqui. Pronto, isso tem bacalhau que existava há 500 anos. 600 anos, lá. 600 anos atrás. E depois, de novo, eu descobri que há 200 anos, 400 anos. Bom. Right now, Carl now Carlos is going to vajazzle this dish with um, some nice colour. So um, he's got uh, some peppers going in, or is that chili? Pepper. That's peppers. Got beautiful colours going in now. So imagine that the cod, the eggs, the potatoes. That's proper comfort food. But then that little bit of colour at the end. He's got some olives going on. No, he's got some parsley going on. I believe that's parsley. Yes, it is. Some olives around the edge. So there you go, guys. I've got a question from Luila. She says, can you use a different sort of fish? Can you use a different salted fish, Carlos? Does it have to be cod? Well, usar outro pescado? Bacalhau. Bacalhau, pescado, outro pescado salato. Não, não, só bacalhau. Este prato é só com bacalhau. Olha só, bacalhau. No, <laughs> is the answer. No, you can't. Okay, do we eat now? Yeah. Come on, Gina, I'll get in it. I'll get in it. Come on, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. let's do four boys, one plate. Four boys, one plate. Is that the boy band name? The boy band. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And with the peppers, it's delicious. Um, okay. Comfort food galore. The, um, the, the little fries, the little straw potatoes are mm. soggy but crispy. Mm. So really nice textures going on there. The egg is, of course, finding all those flavours together. The cod's amazing. 
the audience want you to share it with them. Dina says, can I have some? Mm. Dennis says, that looks so good. Oh, Dina. Hugo wants it for lunch today. Dina, go on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Very, very good. We love it. Very, very nice. Very nice. the book. So guys, um, if you want us to create a boy band, let us know. Because um, it's Christmas coming. Do we, Do you have a Christmas song in Portugal? Yeah. What's the, what's, what's, what's the, what's the most famous Christmas song in Portugal? Portugal song with the music Portuguesa que canta no Natal. Famosa música portuguesa que canta no Natal. Big conversation. It's going to be your first, your first single. It's a big debate. Santos and me used to drum back in the day. So um, we'd be cooking, preparing. And then we'd start bringing in the drum. And then it'd be me, and all the Brazilians. Bam, 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 bam. Just all the Premier and all the Biz and the Cold. It's like a football song. Silent night. If that doesn't make you festive, I don't know what will. Go on, you take it. So, there you go, guys. Um, thank you so much. If you want to get uh, a recipe for this, it's in the new book. Um, also, a massive thank you to Carlos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What a lovely man. Uh, a massive thank you to all of the Brazilian people watching, all of the Portuguese people Viva watching, Brazil. and all of you Viva watching. Viva Viva Portugal. Portugal. Viva Portugal. <laughs> thank you, Gennaro, as always. Thank you, thank thank you Santos. Thank you. And let's go and see what all the people thought of their lunch. Um, guys, how was the lunch? <laughs> thank you, Carlos, top man. Yeah. Top man. And now, yeah. they're going to try, uh, what's your name? <laughs> Gennaro. Gennaro's dish. There you go. Bless you all. And there's more music to come from the boy band. Yeah. I can't turn, I can't turn you too much. Richard, he can't even knob. Oh yeah. You press the knob on the left, Richard. Yes, I want to stop streaming. Yeah, let me take it off.